Yo, what's up? It's your boy Toxitittle coming to you from the Painted Lady Tattoo and Piercing Studio in Parkmore, Santon. You're watching Permanently Painted. Welcome to Permanently Painted. And today we are going to be covering a topic that I've been asked a lot quite recently. And that is how to be a piercer, how to get your apprenticeship. First things first, becoming a pro body piercer. We've got to ask ourselves the number one question that everyone's got to ask themselves when starting a new job. And that is, is this the career for me? Now, if you're wanting to find out if this is a career for you, I'm going to give you 10 little rundown steps. Just giving you an idea of what you're going to be looking forward to as a professional body piercer. And starting without any ado is number one on my list and that is money, riches and fame. However you want to look at it, you may have watched many reality TV shows where you see all these rich and famous piercers rolling in the dough, driving the best cars, having the nicest houses. That's not always necessarily the case. These guys have worked really, really hard and really, really long to get to where they are. And there are many people who have worked just as hard and just as long that you don't even know the names of. So don't think you're going to be rich and famous. This industry is seasonal. It's also trend based. So you may find yourself doing 500 piercings this month and next month the new fad or new trend is to not have any piercings. So you end up only doing five. Keep in mind that a side hustle will definitely be beneficial. Number two, we have long hours. You need to remember that there are people that are working office jobs. They're working their standard nine to five and this basically falls into a kind of retail category. Now, if you've got clients that are doing their standard nine to five, you're gonna to wanna to accommodate them. You wanna try and give them the opportunity to come and get pierced after work. So you're gonna stay open longer than five o'clock to make sure you accommodate those guys. You're gonna be working weekends. So it could be a six or seven day a week kind of job. You need to have tough skin. Your mentor is going to be hard on you. Your client's going to be hard on you. Other piercers are going to be hard on you. People who have no cooking clue what they're doing or what they're talking about, they're going to be hard on you too. So you need to be able to take those criticisms, those chirps, those getting crapped out sessions, and you've got to use those to be able to build yourself, to be stronger, to be better, to advance yourself as a piercer. It kind of brings me to my next point. You've got to be dantic. You've got to look at those piercings and make sure that you're going to get them straight. You've got to be a detailed person. You've got to be someone who has a good eye for those kind of details. Because if your client has a skew piercing, it's going to bug them. My next question to you is this. When you're watching Grey's Anatomy and they start doing the surgery scene, do you find yourself gagging? Does blood creep you out, freak you out or anything like that? Then it's definitely not going to be the profession for you. So what I would suggest is get your friends to come in and get pierced so you can watch them get pierced because then you'll be able to see how it looks when a piercing goes through and how your stomach feels once you've done that piercing. Another good example would be to go and watch YouTube videos and things like that. Don't think this is teaching you how to pierce. All I want you to do is watch those YouTube videos to see if it freaks you the heck out. Again, we're gonna be talking about the money. It's gonna take months before you even get paid one rand. You've gotta do a whole apprenticeship which can last anywhere from three months to a full year to two years, depending on you, depending on your mentor. So you need to understand that you are going to be scrubbing the studio down, learning how to clean everything before you even look at the piercing tools. Then you're going to be sterilizers. Then you're going to be looking at jewelry. Then you're going to learn how to do the next thing. And it will, I promise you, it'll be months until you're actually piercing, physically paying clients. So that brings me on to the next one. Are you a very hygienic person? Even if you're extremely pedantic about your hygiene, know that you will be cleaning more than you've ever cleaned in your entire life. So the more sterile an environment, the better the piercing's gonna go, the better the piercing's going to heal up. Something else you gotta ask yourself, am I a people's person? You gotta remember that you're, you are an artist and your canvas is a human being. So you gotta keep in mind that you are going to be dealing with people a lot. And as I said, you may walk through the mall and you will bump into someone that you've pierced before and they're going to be like, hey, I know you, and they're going to stop and they're going to chat to you. And you've got to give these people a time of day. You've got to help them out with their piercings, even if you're in that mall or whatever, and just help them out, like tell them it's looking good or if it's looking bad, if they need to put this out or the next thing on and so on and so forth. Another factor is when you're going to collect your clients and saying to them, cool, come on through, let's go do the piercing. You don't want to be going there like, um, so let's go do this 
piercing, maybe, because they're going to be like, whoa, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. you got to be confident. you got to exude that confidence aura so that when you go and you go, yeah, you're ready, cool. They're feeling a little bit more confident in your abilities. And if they feel confident in your abilities, they're going to be feeling more comfortable and confident with the procedure that's about to take place. You've got to be someone who's ready to grow at all times. It's an ever-evolving industry. Things are changing all the time. There are going to be piercers who come out with new cleaning methods, new piercing methods, new marking methods, and all sorts of different things like that. And not only do you need to be able to adjust to change and adjust to learning things, you also can't be dogmatic because 10 years down the line, you may be a professional piercer and someone who comes and has been in the industry for two years comes out with this new method and this new methodology and you've got to be able to look at that and not think, oh, this guy's not been in the industry long enough. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You need to be able to look at that and go, okay, that works. That makes sense. Sweet. Let me implement Some that. Piercing like and tattoo parlors, when they do apprenticeships, they believe that the apprentice is basically a slave now this is the most likely outcome you're probably going to be kind of a slave to your mentor you want to go to a mentor who is trying to teach you to be a piercer and nothing else but on top of that you need to understand that you are going to be scrubbing a toilet with a toothbrush you are going to be washing your mentor's car the reason being is they're going to put you through some crappy work to make sure that this is the industry that you want to be in they're going to make sure that you're willing to put the hard work in the time the effort and so on and so forth to make sure that they when they put all their hard work and time and effort into making you a better piercer you're actually going to absorb it and that you wanted to take the time to learn if i haven't scared you away let's get into what i think is the best method to get an apprenticeship as well as all the research that i've done all the piercers that i've spoken to this is the way that they want apprentices to approach them so first things first you're not going to a college or a school or anything like that. Please don't waste your time. Please don't waste your money. Because what's going to happen is that's going to go down the same way as a lot of people complain about college degrees and things like that. You get out of college, you've got this fancy piece of paper and you go, Yeah, Mr. Pierce, I want to be your apprentice or I want to be a piercer. And they're going to go, Cool, where's your working experience? Rather go to your piercer and do the apprenticeship properly. How do I do my apprenticeship properly? You may be asking. Well, here is how you do it. First things first, you are going to research piercers. You're going to search up a whole bunch of piercers and you're going to look for the ones with the best hygiene practices with good years of amount of experience. Perhaps people who have a proven track record with uh, apprentices. That's the first thing is you're going to get onto Instagram, YouTube, wherever it is and you're going to find the piercer that you feel will be a good fit for you and then you're going to go there and you're going to get pierced and you're going to get pierced a lot, not just once or twice. You're going to get pierced as much as you possibly can. You're going to bring your friends in to get pierced. You're going to try and get as many people through those doors as possible from your word of mouth. Basically, you want to support that studio and be around there quite a bit. The thing you're going to do is while you're getting pierced, while your buddies are getting pierced, you need to ask a billion questions. You need to ask every question you can think of. You want to make sure that that piercer knows that you're serious and that you are trying to figure out how to become a piercer in a safe and Way. You're going to try and develop a relationship with this piercer. You want to be on a first name basis so that when you walk through the front door of that studio, everyone knows your name, they know who's there and they know why you're there. They know you're there to get pierced, they know you're there to help out. If there's a mess on the floor, get down on your hands and knees and scrub that up and show them initiative, show that proactiveness that you want to be there and that you're going to work hard to get this piercing apprenticeship done the right way. Next thing you want to do is start asking a little bit more about apprenticeships how your piercer does apprenticeships, if your piercer does apprenticeships. There's often times where piercers don't do apprenticeships, maybe because the studio can't afford it, maybe the, the piercer doesn't really feel comfortable apprenticing just yet. It also could be a fact of they don't have enough people coming in for you to effectively be taught how to be a piercer. Find out if the apprenticeship is free or not. There are a lot of studios that charge apprentices a little fee to make sure that they are A, once again, willing to stick it out and work hard, as well as B, to pay for the needles and the gloves and the jewelry and things like that that you'll be using during practice piercing. Make sure that your piercer knows that you're putting your hat in the ring for any piercing apprentice spots that they may have coming up or if they've got any up at the moment or if in future they're thinking of maybe taking on an apprentice, they'll think of you first because why? You're always around the shop, you're always hanging out. You may find, and this is very common to happen, is that while you're hanging around, they may need someone to 
man the front desk, answer phones, book in, e uh, book in clients, handle emails, handle filing of indemnity forms and things like that, you will probably be put into that place first. Once again, to just show you how this piercing studio or tattoo studio or both works and how things go down and how their procedures work so that when you slowly start integrating yourself into that studio more as an apprentice and then eventually a junior piercer to become a professional piercer, you will know the methods from the ground up all the way to the artist. Like I said, maybe they can't take you on, so you need to be able to deal with that rejection and understand that sometimes it's not a case of it's your fault or anything like that. It may just be a it's not you, it's me. Make sure that you've got a couple of other piercing studios as backups that you also would like to go to that are also great piercers. Last thing that I want to say is once again, I just want to reiterate, please, no DIY home piercings or anything like that. Don't learn how to do it via YouTube. You will not gain respect in the industry and you will probably do terrible piercings and end up causing your, yourself or your client illnesses and diseases and infections and all sorts of things that you just don't need to deal with. If you've got any questions that you would like to ask, or any information you would like to find out with regards to tattoos or piercings, please drop it in the comment section below and I'll make sure to get back to those. Otherwise, you can always DM me if you feel like you can do us a huge favor and share our videos out to anyone who may find it helpful and give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us an upvote. It depends what platform you're watching on, but give us some love and we'll see you soon. Stay safe.